This is my completed TRS-80 conversion. It now has an i5 3.1 gigahertz processor in it. It will run pretty much anything if you include virtual machines. Runs all my original DOS programs. I kept the original floppy drives and the LED on the second floppy drive acts as the hard drive light. It does have the original keyboard. I installed a Pi 3 adapter board that will allow me to use this keyboard with a USB connector so I can connect it to my computer motherboard just like a regular USB keyboard. And of course this keyboard is missing a lot of keys. It doesn't have as many keys as a modern 101 keyboard. So I reprogrammed it to have a second level function. So whenever I press the F1 key and hold it, I can press other keys and they have secondary functions. For example, if I press F1 and hold it and I press 0, that's the equivalent of pressing F10. Even though I'm short on keys, I still have all the features I need. And I can also use the on-screen virtual keyboard. Now here's my running computer. And this is my Megados drive. It has far more games and utilities than I could possibly go through. So I'm going to just hit some highlights. It has an Android collection, Commodore 64, Amiga, Amiga CD32, the uh, new homebrew MAME, is a mega game pack 1,643 games. Of course it has MESS and this is the full MESS system with all known available software ROMs and images. I have an MSX collection, the Engage, and of course Scum VM. You really need a keyboard to play a lot of the Scum VM games. And I have the Apple Lisa emulator. If I go to my other 4 terabyte drive I have uh, Windows 95 apps, and if I look under that folder, I have a number of applications that I've saved over the years. And you probably don't remember it, but back in the 1990s, it was very common to buy pirate CDs from China. And this folder contains a number of those CDs, which, which is various utilities and games that were out at the time. There was no internet, or at least the internet wasn't able to distribute large files so they were distributed by CD. I have an ASCII art collection, uh, assorted Windows 3.1 and DOS files, uh, older systems like the Sinclair and the TI-99, uh, an Atari collection. I have a number of basic programs. These are all written in basic. They're .bas programs originally for DOS. And this is the source code those are interesting to play with. I have a number of CD-ROM sets as well. Uh, back in the 80s and 90s, there were companies called uh, Simtel and Chestnut, and they would produce CDs that had all kinds of utilities. And of course, with DOS utilities being very small, you could fit a lot of utilities on one CD. So here's a ham radio from 1992, uh, Action Fest DOS, best of mega games for DOS, a thousand DOS and Windows games and of course I have the Simtel from 97, 1992, 1995 I have a source code from Walnut Creek and uh, DOS games 1995 so there's a, a lot of utilities and games there uh, a lot of shareware, a lot of freeware I have a number of documents as well uh, th these are basic and early computer manuals and primers. Uh, under DOS I have a huge collection of DOS files. Uh, I have some BBS programs. Uh, I used to run a BBS. And I have all the original software that I use for that. The Commander Keen collection. Uh, DOS applications. DOS gambling games like blackjack and poker. A uh, collection of DOS games and utilities. And this is something I think is really missing from the current collector scene. Everyone collects games, but I think a lot of the old utilities are really cool. And with the ability to run them on a virtual machine, they actually can be useful. So it's good to have these DOS utilities. And these are something that you really don't find even on uh, the internet anywhere. So I'm glad I saved all those from the early days. And of course, there are lots of games. I have tons of game collections. And if we go back, 
Uh, I'm running DOSBox. You, you have to have DOSBox to run a lot of these old games. You don't have a virtual machine. I have a number of game creation programs. There were some companies that came out in the 90s had programs that would allow you to create games easily. And of course, I have my game cheats. Uh, game cheats were very important in the era of DOS. You, sometimes you replaced a file, but most often you would have to do a hex edit on the EXE and it would allow you to cheat on the game. So here's tons of cheats for all those games. Also solution manuals for Leisure Suit Larry and some of those. Uh, I have uh, handheld simulators, uh, Mac OS X sets, a uh, number of magazines and books. And there were a lot of magazines from the 80s like Assembly Language Magazine, uh, Game Developer Magazine, and Game Guides, Joystick Magazine, and uh, a German Gaming Magazine, and lots of other interesting resources there. And of course we have Mess. I uh, already talked about Mess. I have the full collection. I have a number of info files. A uh, number of specialty systems. I also collect operating systems. I have two folders of operating systems. Everything from basic Linux, AT&T Unix, uh, Alpha Linux, uh, Desk View, Digital Research, is Dr. DOS, uh, IBM PC DOS, Linux, uh, that, that's actually Linux in a pillbox, and I have a number of other uh, really really old Linux versions, things that you don't see anymore that r don't even run on modern computers. I have a complete collection of DOS, and of course Windows back to 1.0, uh, Novell, uh, SCO Unix, Fax, VMS. These can all be run using virtual machines now. Uh, I also have Coherent. It's probably something you've never heard of. It's a type of Unix that came out for a short time. Uh, Cray 1 Supercomputer Emulator. Uh, FreeDOS. Uh, ENIAC Simulator. Uh, some other DOS versions. A Univac Simulator. And uh, of course Xenix. That's going to be one I'm going to put some time into and try to build a working Xenix system. I also have a PC Fix-It disk. This is something that I created to work on computers long ago. It originally started out as a floppy disk and it soon expanded into several floppy disks and when CDs came out it became a CD. So it has all the really handy utilities that you needed to work on DOS and Windows 3.1 computers. And a lot of these utilities are things you don't see anymore. They're simply not available because no one buys them. They're not even available on the web. I uh, have a TRS-80 section. Since I converted this as a TRS-80, I thought that was really important to have a TRS-80 section. And I have tons of books, manuals, hardware manuals, software manuals, uh, cassette cable pinouts, and various other pinouts, frequently asked questions, and of course tons of games and utilities that ran on the TRS-80. Uh, my unprotects and serials, we already looked at some of those. This is another folder. There's just so many I had to split them up. And those are really necessary to run some of the older games. And we're back to some utilities. And we have some Windows games. Windows 95. I have the World of Sinclair collection. Which, is, which has tons of Sinclair games and information. And it's also a lot of technical details. And that's really just a small fraction of what's on this drive. There's two four terabyte drives and they're almost full of DOS and Windows 3.1, Windows 95 related software and outdated operating systems and virtual machines. So over the next few months I'll be putting these together as virtual machines and making them work, installing some software. Uh, I've already installed one. I installed Doom. Okay, one thing I have already installed is the Simpsons Doom. This is a hack for the original Doom game where you played with Simpsons characters. Very popular at the time. You run it from the command line. It gives you a little warning. Press enter to continue. And there's Simpsons Doom. And if you want to go full screen with DOSBox, you do an Alt-Enter, 
Now on my keyboard I change the caps to be Alt because I don't use the caps key very much. So Alt, Enter, and now it's full screen. You do the same, take it back to small screen. So you see it has the Simpsons voices and uh, gameplay. So that's my first game that I've installed. I have a lot more to go. There's no way I can use the front end on this because there's just too many games. and There's probably several thousand games on here. Some of them are duplicates, but they also come from different sources. Many of them are games that I purchased back in the 80s and 90s. And some are games that were given to me, and some are also some that I picked up at the thrift store for a few dollars. So that's my TRS-80 conversion to a modern computer, and that also shows what it can run. Hope you've enjoyed this project, and you can find more projects like this at mechanicalarcade.com. Well, this is my TRS-80 Type 4. I've already cleaned it up. It looked like it was stored in the barn for some years. I used a magic eraser. That stripped away a lot of the yellow coating, but it still has a chalky feel. You can still rub your fingernail on it and the plastic comes up. So I'm probably going to spray this with some type of polyurethane, like a satin or a low gloss polyurethane, just to protect it and to keep it from chalking up. Now this has been worked on. And I don't know if you can see, but there's some damage. Someone tried to pry it up along the edges. You can see there's a screw missing on the back. And I know that's a sign that this has been opened before. Now you saw the marks where someone had taken a screwdriver and tried to pry this open. Most likely they took out the obvious screws but they missed that screw and that screw. Those are recessed. They're a little harder to see. So someone probably thought the case was not opening. But it should open very easily if you remove all the screws. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten screws. I know from research that you have to be careful when putting this top on or off because the CRT can catch on wires and break and there's also a piece of metal back there if you put it on the wrong way it can crack. Alright all my screws are out so we're going to see what it looks like. And I've got it up just a little bit. I'm going to look through the hole that's above the floppy drive and make sure nothing is catching. And it is catching. So I'm going to have to be really careful not to break anything. If I hadn't known to check for that, I could have easily broken the CRT. Okay, that's the inside of our top case, the CRT. And this is the inside of the Type 4. So we have two half height floppy drives with full height fronts. We have a power supply and we have our main processor board in the back protected by all the shielding.
when I plugged this unit in, I didn't have any activity. But I'm not really sure what that means. It could mean a bad power supply, or it could mean a completely dead CRT. I don't see any blown capacitors or any swelled capacitors. So it's hard to tell, but it doesn't really matter because I didn't plan to fix this unit. I will pass those boards along to someone else who can fix it, or can use those. Here is my TRS-80 after the conversion. You can see I have my motherboard mounted to a board on the back. I have my sound card. And I have my keyboard decoder. A little stand to hold my power outlets. I have three hard drives, two 4 terabytes and a 250. Power supply, power supply for the monitor. And my original keyboard. I kept the original floppy drives and my light on my lower drive is now connected to the hard drive light which is right there and this was a very easy connection to make you can see on this top drive the number nine connector all, all you have to do is pull out the number nine connector and that goes directly to the LED so it was very easy conversion and here's my monitor mounted inside the case. So the only actual modifications I had to make to the case were to the bezel so that my flat monitor would fit 